Okay, we are making our way through the boxes, finally. So what, what the heck is today's video gonna be about? You guys, you're really gonna like that big one down there, but that's not for today. Especially this huge one, very excited to do that one, but I think we're gonna start with something a bit smaller today. Let's do this one right here. Now this little device is called the Can Checked. And all I can say is it is one cool gadget. Before I even get into what the heck it is, let's crack this box open. All right, the can checked all the way from Germany. So in a nutshell, this is a multi-function gauge that can display all kinds of information about your engine. It requires minimal wiring, no additional sensors, and connects directly to your standalone ECU with just two wires. Can checked offers a universal gauge that does all of this called the MFD15, and that's essentially what I have here, except this is a special version called the MFA 2.0, which fits directly into your Miata's gauge cluster for a factory look. Let's crack this box open and see what we get. Now this is a very, compact display. It's going to replace the oil pressure gauge in your Miata's cluster. And I know it looks like it's got quite a wiring harness to it, but fear not, this install was very easy. Now being a German company, the included instructions are in German, but they also offer an English version on their website. I'll go ahead and link those down below. Wired up to the gauge, you have a micro USB port. This is used for when CanCheck comes out with any firmware updates. You can upload it directly into the gauge inside the car. You have a small rotary switch with a long harness, which you can install install anywhere you like. This is what you're going to use to control the displays and go through the different screens on the gauge, and a small harness that you need to wire in for the essentials like power, ground, and the connection to your standalone ECU. As the name suggests, this unit communicates through the CAN output of your standalone ECU, which means you only have to run two wires to the ECU and it can output information through basically all of the sensors on the engine. So let's get to the installation here. You're going to start by removing the gauge hood and the plastic covers on wonder who that is. How's it going, man? We're just out here going door to door trying to spread the word about the High Performance Academy. It's basically an online school that teaches you how to build modified street cars and race cars the proper way. And I couldn't help it over here that you were talking about some wiring just now. It just so happens that wiring is a massive part of the HP Academy. They have all types of content specifically on that. Whether you're looking to just learn how to wire gauges and switches better, or get a more fundamental understanding of CAN bus systems, or even build an entire EFI wiring harness from scratch. We're actually doing an in-person discount today. I'm gonna give you a link to put in the description of that video that you're editing. It's gonna save your followers $50 off their first purchase to HP Academy. And if they do decide to buy any courses, it helps out the Car Passion channel as well. So everybody wins. And if they're not satisfied with their purchase, HPA also offers a 60 day money back guarantee. So there's basically no risk, but I can pretty much guarantee you're gonna like what you buy. Anyways, that's all I want to talk about today. I'm actually gonna walk across the street and talk to your neighbor. It looks like they could use some of HPA's diesel tuning courses. So yeah, see you later. Thanks. All right, yeah. Thanks, man. Have a good one. You sounds like a pretty good deal. Okay, let's get back to it. Now the installs are gonna vary slightly between NA and NB Miatas, but using this tutorial, you'll be able to get it done no matter what you have. You're gonna start by removing your steering column cover and gauge hood and loosening up your gauge cluster. Then get everything unplugged from the back of the gauges. Now, if you do have an NA Miata, you'll also have to disconnect your speedometer cable, but on the NBs, it's just three electrical plugs. After the cluster is out, you also need to remove the ECU. I'm not gonna cover that whole process in this video, Video because I've already done that for both NA and NB Miatas. If you have a standalone in your car, you probably know how to remove the ECU, but just in case you don't, I'll link videos down in the description below that'll show you how to do that for NA and NB Miatas. Here I'll be covering how to connect the MFA 2.0 to an ME442 ECU, but you can connect this to any ECU that has CAN outputs, including Mega Squirt and most, if not all, other aftermarket standalones. On the Motorsport Electronics ECU, you'll see 
see two pins called CAN low and CAN high. Those are the two pins you'll have to connect to your MFA 2.0. To connect onto the pins, you'll need some kind of terminal. I don't remember exactly where I got these little leads from, but you can actually buy those little terminals, a whole pack of them for six or eight bucks from Summit Racing or probably any electronics store. And then I just did a little heat shrink wrap over the entire thing to make sure they couldn't contact anything else or each other. I recommend using two different colors of wire, but if you only have one color laying around, be sure you label which wire is plugged into which pin before you put your ECU back together. At this point, you can reinstall the ECU. Just let those two wire leads hang out and you'll connect to them later. The thicker red and black wires are going to be the power and ground for the whole system. Now, which wires you tap into are going to depend on what year your Miata is. Mine is a 99, so keep that in mind. You'll want to look up the pinouts for your gauge cluster when you're deciding which wires you're going to tap into. I found the pinout for a 99 and I'll be using pin 1C for the power and pin 3J for the ground. I also highly recommend using a digital multimeter to make sure you're tapping into a 12 volt source before you put your car back together and realize that the gauge doesn't turn on. Over on the car, making sure the colors match up to the diagrams that I found online, black and yellow is indeed the 12 volt source. And then on this plug here, the black wire over on the left side is the ground that I'll be using. I'll show you my pro tips for actually splicing into those wires very shortly, but first we have to disassemble the cluster itself and physically install the gauge into it. Now this thing better look pretty dang good because I'm sacrificing one of my rev limiter gauge faces to install it. So the first step here is to carefully remove the needle from the oil pressure gauge using some type of pry tools and remove the two screws that hold the face on. After that, flip your gauge cluster around and you'll have three screws on the back that hold the actual pressure gauge into the cluster. Once your pressure gauge is out, you can kind of reassemble it like this and put it away for very safe keeping. Now before the can check goes in, we have to make one small modification in the form of drilling a giant hole in the top of the cluster. I'm just kidding, the hole's not really that big, but you do have to drill a hole in order to get the harness of the can checked through the top of the cluster. I'm actually using the same drill bit that I used to drill Miata oil pans for the turbo return line, and that size is 14 millimeters, or for my American followers, about 9 16 the width of a bald eagle's toenail. Now just run all of the harness through the top of the cluster and drop the can checked into it, and the three factory screws will hold it into place. They conveniently set the harness up with plugs for the larger items, so you don't have to drill as large of a hole in your cluster. You can just run the harness through and then plug everything back into it. Then I just threw some electrical tape on top of that hole to prevent dust from getting inside the gauge cluster. Now there are some additional wires that I will not be using in this install. I'm just going to cap them off with some heat shrink wrap to make sure they don't contact anything, but I want to have them there in case I use them in the future. And these are just for hooking up additional sensors that you can get a display on in case the ECU doesn't monitor something that you want to see on the gauge. You can add up to four additional sensors and the can checked also has a five volt out and ground for those additional sensors in case you can't pull the signals from anywhere else. Now let's get this thing wired in. I'm going to start by taking that rotary switch and dropping it down behind underneath the dash. I'm going to put it down by the left side here and just drill a small hole in the plastic so I have easy access to it. And I'll also drop the two can signal wires down to the area of the ECU and we'll get those connected in a bit. But first let's worry about getting that power and ground tapped into the factory harness. Now I am not above doing a sketchy splice to get something working, but to me the most annoying part about that is if you Y or T into a wire, you can't get shrink wrap over it. But since we're so close to the connectors, what I'm going to do here is de-pin the wires that I'm going to splice into and that will allow me to actually get heat shrink wrap over my connection. So I'll just carefully shave off a little bit of the insulation with the razor blade and then take my power and ground leads, make a twist around that exposed wire, put a little solder on that, and then throw heat shrink wrap over it. And now I'm avoiding using messy electrical tape. After you're done with that, you can just pop the pin back into the factory connector and you are done. The only other connection we have to make before this thing is fully functional is connecting the can high and the can low to the ECU. And then we can power it up and give it a test. And there, 
here it is, kind of. Okay, so you can see that it is powered up, but it's not reading any information from the ECU, and that's because there's just a little bit of setup that's required in order to get the ECU talking to the gauge. So let's start with the gauge itself, and to navigate the menus, you're gonna use that rotary switch. So you're just gonna click it once, that'll bring up that upper menu, and just scroll over until you get to setup. Now scroll down to can term, and this needs to be yes for our setup. Can type, I'm gonna select ME442, you would select whatever ECU you're using, and then can speed doesn't really matter as long as it matches what's in your ECU, and I'm gonna show you how to set that up in just one second. Over in the Motorsport Electronics software, you just have to go down to the can menu, and then can settings. Bitrate selection just needs to be the same as the can check, so I'll set this to 500 kilobytes per second, and then you can see up on the can check, it also matches at 500 kilobytes per second. Up on the stream selection menu, if yours is reading ME1 underscore 2, that means you're running an old version of the firmware, and I'm going to show you how to update that right now. Now, if you don't need a firmware update, you can just use the time bar down below to skip ahead, but I needed to update my firmware in order to install this, so I figure someone out there might need to do it as well, and it's quick and painless. First, head over to the Motorsport Electronics Downloads page. I will link that in the description below, and you just need to download the latest version of the firmware as of the filming of this video is going to be 3.8.1. Then on your laptop, under the ECU menu, click on Firmware Update, manually select the new firmware file, and click Start, and then yes, you want to continue. Make sure your engine is off, your battery is fully charged, and if you do have any aftermarket ignition coils, you need to disconnect those coils to avoid any damage. I'm just basically saying what all these warning menus already read. Read the warnings before clicking OK. And you're done. Wait 30 seconds, press OK, restart the tuning software, re-upload your calibration file. When you try to load your calibration file again after the firmware update, you're gonna get a gigantic warning like this. You can just press yes, it's all right. I loaded my calibration file and didn't really have any issues, but if you do run into anything, you can always contact Motorsport Electronics and they'll walk you through any troubles that you're having. The reason I needed a firmware update is upon initial install of the can checked, it was reading the external AFR from the ME442, which is this one right here, and I don't have an external wideband. This number means nothing. I'm using the internal wideband controller on the ME442, and that's the number that the can check needs to read. And that was my my number one reason for wanting a can checked because when you use the internal wideband controller you actually don't get an AFR gauge and I really really like to have an AFR gauge anytime I'm driving a car with a modified engine. Once the firmware update is complete you'll now have the ME1 underscore 3 option on the stream selection menu and that's the one you have to choose. And just leave secondary stream selection off. Now the can checked is automatically reading the internal wideband signal. So now I can fire up the engine and see what some of these readouts are and you can just use that rotary switch to change around the different readouts and go through several of the different displays on the gauge. And it's got a bunch of other super cool features as well. One of my favorites has to be the programmable shift light where you can tune it to turn different colors based on the RPM. So it can tell you when you're getting close to the limiter or when you need to shift or whatever your preference is, you can set it up however you like. I'm gonna demo this thing later in the video when we take it out for some pulls. And here you can see I'm just cycling through some of the various display options options and screens. The easiest way to mount the switch is just by drilling a hole like this and it comes with a nut and washer so you can mount it into any plastic or metal panel. You can hide it in the center console or put it wherever your heart desires. I just wanted it in a nice easy to access place right here and if you keep it relatively close to the gauge cluster then you don't have to extend the harness. Now it's time to go ahead and reassemble everything. There's a little bit of a fitment issue in that the stock oil pressure gauge is recessed behind the tachometer and the speedometer more than the can check is and you can see the gauge ring is deeper on this little face plate so it will fit but if you want it to fit better you do have to trim that piece down a little bit. I just trimmed it up little by little with a razor blade and kept test fitting until I got it pretty much right. I mean it's not perfect there's probably better ways to do it but I think it came out fine. The last little bit is just reassembling the rest of the cluster the gauge hood etc and there it is. Look how nice and factory that display looks. The only thing left to do is take it for a test drive. Alright, that was my first time launching with the launch control and the NB. That's pretty sick. I'm loving the shift light. What a 
cool little gadget. All right, I switched the, uh, the upper one is now throttle position and the bottom one is gear. So now when I launch, I can check out my TPS to see if this thing can handle a full throttle launch. the stock exhaust back on in case you couldn't tell the ISR was just way too loud so I'm gonna get something else I'm thinking about either a Cobalt or a Roadster Sport V4 or something like that drop down below in the comments if you have either one of those exhausts I think my road test is about done sorry about the shaky camera by the way I literally didn't bring any camera mounts so that concludes the install of the CanCheckt MFA 2.0. If you do think this is an awesome gadget and you want to get your own, you can check them out at cancheckt.de. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more Miata installs and content, and I will see you guys on the next Miata Monday.